Hello viewers, SuperGT here. Welcome back to Forza Motorsport 7. Now, the last time I played this game was testing the collision system, which we're doing again here. But last time it wasn't actually working. There was some sort of synchronizing issue. So I had a free pass just to wipe out everyone and get no penalty for it at all. This time it is working. So we have ourselves the real penalty simulator now. This is the actual thing working. Let's see how it does work. Now let's not forget that this isn't you know, this isn't the final form of it. This is a constantly ongoing, worked on process. As we go flying into the first chicane, sideways, with the handbrake on, which is probably the ideal line into that chicane, I must say. Uh, we don't get a penalty for it, but we do get a penalty for the contact with this guy just after. I was just wondering, perhaps because so many people were murdered, it actually can't work out, we can't process that amount of information so during the course of this video i'm going to get a load of cut track penalty warnings or no penalties there but that's not really the important thing the main thing we're trying to really check out is the collision penalties so we try again here come flying in and see what we get and on this occasion it's going to be a no penalty and i'm just wondering exactly how that's working because obviously I'm completely at fault for that, completely. But um, my R4M membership seems to be intact as I'm not getting any penalties at all. We're coming down into Parabolica, another sweet opportunity to go for a big strike. And I think one of the things here is that I'm not gaining any positions. I'm losing time myself, so it might not be you might be factoring that in and saying, okay, well, I'm losing time, therefore uh, it doesn't count. So cutting this part here, flying into that guy, wipe him out completely, get an 8.5 second penalty for cutting the track. And then the collision, uh, avoidable contact, 5.2 seconds for smashing into the back of that guy. And I think that's kind of okay there, 5.2 seconds, because that was really obvious. For some reason there's a guy eating discos. I'm not sure what's going on in the background, but I got ahead of a load of guys through the Ascari chicane. Now with a casual 29 second penalty. Now with a 54 second penalty, if you look at the bottom left of the screen. And we're, get, we're gonna get pushed off here. Little Nice little fight up the straight between myself and Abiotic Soup. And these are the kind of things you wanna actually test, just to see if you do get penalties for these things. So it might seem a bit um, morally bankrupt that I'm murdering so many innocent bystanders here but um, I suppose you just need to test the system that's exactly what I'm doing so definitely the uh, the cut in the track one works I'm pretty sure that is pretty much as good as it gets and I got absolutely murdered and I didn't see that one coming if I'm honest didn't see it coming but we move on and I'm obviously down into sixth after challenging for first we've got one minute nine worth of penalty though well, I'm in 16 now by the time it gets to the end and we finished sixth we finished sixth so that was a good result thanks to all the boys back in the factory now I don't know why but I went down to 21st position I'm not sure what I did wrong I don't think I did anything wrong in that race I don't think I did anything bad at all but yeah went down to 21st we moved to Lime Rock in the Mazda MX-5 this is always a really good combination in any sort of racing and it's a it's a good one to test here I think because you can get lots of close racing and what I want to see really is if lots of like minor taps and overtaking with uh, you know small amount of contact like that does that give you penalties because it's that kind of intricate little touching that um, that's the kind of contact you're going to see quite a lot in the game just where people just just nudge each other a little bit wide and then gain positions that way so that's the kind of contact we want to see working. On this occasion, no penalties given out so far. As we come up to the right-hander up the hill. Uh, lots of contact going on between the between the group of us here. So just push him out of the way almost. Push that guy off as he goes past. Again, no penalty. So a lot of the time it is calculating it as it should. It's not giving a penalty when I really don't think it should be giving one. So it is actually working for the most part. And I would say that it's so hard to get one system that works for absolutely every scenario in motorsport. It's just almost impossible. It's almost impossible. That's why in real life you have to have 
let's say in, in, in F1, you have like real driver stewards, and even they sometimes have to take three or four hours just to look at one incident to come to a, a conclusion about it. So to work out, to have one system that can work out absolutely every scenario is very difficult. Um, we'll give a proper rating at the end of the game, but so far it's, I think, working fairly well. Obviously those massive takeouts at Monza, that could have been done better. But um, it's all these little contacts which I'm not gaining too much out of uh, that um, it's not giving a penalty for, but that kind of does at least promote some break. You don't want to get heavily penalised for absolutely every bit of contact. You've got to allow some. Sometimes you are going to make door-to-door uh, -door contact like that there. You know, nothing really in that. No penalty given, fair enough. That's probably how it should be. It's a good fight, though, because... This combination always gives good battling. As uh, in the slower cars, you can race a lot closer to each other, and um, when you're going a lot slower, it's easier to sort of ride the contact so you can carry on racing. And it's actually turning out to be quite a good race so far. Lap number four now, sitting in fourth. We've got the inside, not quite. The Brazilian is going to hang him out to dry, not quite. He goes up into second. So we look to try to get past these two as quickly as possible. The leader, Abiotic Soup as uh, he's got away so the Brazilian just holding off the American through this uh, long left and uh, the only left on this track he's going to look for the move here not quite on look how close that is though pretty much touching his rear bumper and in fact I did there's a collision uh, calculation but no penalty given he just gets a little bit out of hand out of control coming up the hill loses a bit of momentum we got the inside up into third can we go for second we have just over one lap to go. Looking for the inside here, it's not the best place to go for a move. There's no real breaking point. It goes a little bit wide, opens up the space on the way out of the turn. And we're going to get the second place on the beginning of the final lap now. So under pressure then from the two behind. So it just pretty much changes the race. You get ahead and then it's a defensive race. That guy going very slowly on the racing line. But luckily we have ghosted back markers. Now my one my one worry about this system is that if you're a rammer, if you just if you're just hell bent on just killing people and absolutely murdering and ruining people's races, th these penalties aren't really going to stop you. All it does is it just means you're going to finish lower down in the final classification, but you can still ruin people's races if you really wanted to. It doesn't particularly stop that. Uh, so systems like iRacing. Where you have like a, a you know a class or a rating, and then you race with people with a similar rating, that could work. That that would at least be some sort of deterrent, and and at least then you'll be racing with people in a similar category. But then coming across the line, now look away, kids, because this this is absolutely filthy stuff. A mounting has occurred once again, and it's not really for anyone under 18 to look at. But anyway, we move on to Suzuka. Now, this is always going to be a chaotic race. Now, I'm going to deliberately slow down a little bit here. I just want to kind of get into the real nitty-gritty of the mid-pack as we come into turn one and two. Now, we're going to push him wide. Now, we're going to push this guy wide and see what we get. What do we get for that? So, we've got six seconds for pushing the first guy off and nothing for the second. So... Obviously, the second was completely deliberate, but nothing nothing coming from that. And uh, lost of contact in. I'm straight into the end of that wall, which I kind of forgot was there. And we eventually can continue after spending a lot of time in the grass. Now, we're going to go for this. Look at this move. Right, this guy comes on and smash into the back of him. Push him off. No penalty. Weird one, that. As um, he was definitely... He came onto the track and then I smashed him off deliberately. That definitely was not an attempt to wipe out everyone at the hairpin with a complete fail. Definitely wasn't. Now this, um, yeah, we're going to try and catch up with a load of people. This is pretty good actually. I was going to fly into that guy. Let's just, just assume I was going to hit him. It ghosted me out just before, which was good. The fact that I couldn't have just wiped him out with a 2 billion mile an hour collision. It's pretty good news, and that bodes well. So the ghosting actually working there pretty well. 45 seconds worth of penalty, across the line in fifth. 
go down to 20th after all of that. Bit of testing though, it's all it's all for testing, all for the good of testing. That's why I have no guilt with ramming everyone off. Okay, so this is going to be another chaotic race. Anything in fast cars is just typically an absolute horror show. Coming into turn one, Spa, which is normally, again, a horror show. So go down to 14th, out of 14, we're dead last. But um, that gives us some potential here to come through the pack and see what we can do as we come up through Eau Rouge and uh, going off the track a little bit, trying to overtake as many people as possible, uh, cutting the track, but that's not really the worry here. So up into 7th gear, over 200 miles an hour into the chicane, and that's kind of a weird little moment there, and it, it deemed no penalty, which I think is fair because it was, it was just a weird racing incident, no one could really properly react to that. We're just trying to get up the inside of the Italian. You see, you see their quarter of a second avoidable uh, collision. So I think if you go into the back of someone, it has to be quite a hard hit. And then it does give you a quarter of a second penalty. He does recognise that contact from behind. If it's a light tap, it doesn't do anything. But if it is quite a hard hit, it does have... Basically, the, the speed delta, the speed difference between the two of you is calculated. If it's a big difference, then it, it will give you a penalty. So that got the inside through the last source hairpin. I'm up a position up into 8th place. I'm not sure what's up with the acceleration here of his car. But I think he's got a GP2 engine as we come down the hill. And I'm up into 7th place. This car easily flat out through there. Don't even have to lift off at all. Up the Kemmel straight into the Lacombe chicane. Let's see if we can go about overtaking Polar Chip 399775. Great name. Coming down the hill then, got the switch back on him. I'm not going to fall foul to that mistake. He's just going to nudge me through this corner so many times. Won't give up. And that's a good reason here just to ram him off into the wall. Uh, absolutely deliberate smash. But no penalty. It was a weird one. Because obviously, obviously I wanted him in the wall. It was a deliberate, a deliberate smash into the wall. No penalty though. No penalty. Crossing the line ninth eventually. Now this race, we're going to try to do this one cleanly. Just see how the race goes. So just trying to test different sort of types of racing. Like really aggressive um, bowling racing. Where you just strike everyone out at every corner. But let's just try some actual proper racing and just see if you get any penalties for things that you shouldn't have got it for. So just trying to be different grades of aggressive, basically. On this occasion here, we're going to try to just actually race as if it's just a normal race. We get about slamming people into the realm. So up to 16th. Give it a nice and tight through here. This car is an absolute... It just basically handles like an anvil. It's just so heavy and it doesn't particularly turn very well does remind me of how heavy the physics can feel on this game. Coming through the flying left. Again, <laughs> most people into the wall just come into this left-hander. Great corner this. I actually love this corner. Maple Valley's a brilliant circuit. Up the inside of a couple of people and a bit of a knock-on effect around the outside of a few. Up into 10th place and around the outside we go. Up into the top 10. That's a good start. We started 19th. We started quite a long way back. And we've made our way up quite quickly so far with only a quarter of a second penalty at this point here so lots of cars very close to each other coming up the hill and it actually reminds me you know people here are actually racing very well and the racing can be very good on this game it's just, just you just need the right people you just don't need super gt smashing everyone off at monster basically and those three there going three abreast it just it's not the quickest way through a chicane i must admit so we've got three positions up into seventh 19th to 7th in one lap. Coming down the hill then, final difficult corner of this, as there is quite a nasty bump as you just hit the apex there. Sends you a little bit wide. Carry as much speed as you dare. Just gonna cover off this guy. And I, I just break a little bit too late. And just got the inside, and it's just one of those awkward touches where you just get caught on the other car. You're trying to turn, but the car won't turn because you're stuck on each other. And annoyingly, we both kind of just drive on, and it's just one of those frustrating little incidents that you can often get on this game. No penalty though. It was a bit of a dive bomb, although I, well, I, I was I wasn't really trying to overtake him, just break too late because I was focused on the car behind. But I suppose it's all all good, all for the good of testing. No penalty on that occasion, although we do have three quarters of a second at this point here. 
quite a late break into the back of this guy. And actually gives us um, a contact warning for that one. So quarter of a second added on. So fair enough. It was quite a big hit in, in the rear end. But of course with the recent physics update, or at least six months ago, the one that made all the cars feel really heavy in terms of contact, you know, the, the, the other cars aren't really affected by some of these really big hits. Weary Foal driving very wide. We go up into 8th. We're going to try to get a nice line on the way out here. People going in too fast on the first corner and it's just compromising them all the way through the next corners. We move up into 7th again. It's coming down the hill. This is the really tricky corner here. As again, there's that massive bump and it just throws me off there. And I go wide into the path of Bulldog who was just smashed into the wall. No penalty. Um, that's the thing. That's the thing you worry about like you hit someone and this is my fear from Gran Turismo you hit someone and overtake them while they're crashing and then normally get a penalty at least Forza isn't doing that Forza is n noticing that that guy was spun off you know it was just a racing incident completely so at least the game is definitely realizing that and it's getting a lot of things right but obviously there's some of the big hits which where nothing's happening and it should be and here's a reminder of just how sticky the cars can be I didn't even really want to turn across that guy, it's just like we were kind of stuck on each other and I couldn't turn off of him and he kind of edged me into the wall, but I wasn't having any of that. Weary Foal is getting sent to the grassy realm, just for the lols basically. But again, let's see if I get any collision penalty for this. This was purely deliberate, this was 100% premeditated. No penalty though, somehow. So I mean there, there, are, there are ways to abuse this system, but obviously it's not a fully complete system as of yet. We eventually cross the line in 11th, but probably get about two years worth of penalties and 100 hours community service or something. But there we go. Thank you so much for watching as always, guys. Let me know your thoughts. I do hope you've enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for all my supporters, any viewers. Thank you for making it this far into the video. Well done on that. Follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter for more juicy content, and I'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.